there are two things that we need to consider before we can even start estimating a confirmatory factor in our model called scale setting and identification. The scale setting means that every variable must have a metric. So we have to be able to estimate uh, the variance and or sometimes the mean of every variable. And identification means that the data provides enough information to estimate the model that we want to estimate. So the confirmatory factor analysis framework is very flexible and it's possible to define models that are mathematically impossible to estimate uniquely. So uh, in this video we will go through the, what requirements you have to consider before you can even estimate a model meaningfully. Let's take a look at this model with uh, just two indicators. So we have indicator A1 and A2 and then we want to estimate factor A. And uh, we have two variances, these two error variances here, and then we have two factor loadings. So we have uh, four things that we want to estimate and so four free parameters. Then we start estimating it. We uh, calculate the model implied correlations. So we have two variances, variance of A3, A2 and variance of A1 and then one correlation. So we have uh, three unique elements of information from the data that we uh, model using these, these four parameters. The problem is that now we have uh, three units of information and we have four things that we want to estimate. So the decrease of freedom is minus one. And that can't be estimated or it can't be estimated meaningfully. Uh, the, the reason is that uh, our intuitive understanding of this is that uh, you cannot estimate four things from three things. So that's, that's the idea. You, ha you have to have more information than what you want to estimate. So this is not identified and there are ways that we can simplify the model to actually be able to estimate something or we can add more indicators to make it identified. So this is not identified because the decrease of freedom is negative. And factor analysis without additional constraints always requires at least three indicators. Factor analysis of two indicators only is not a very meaningful analysis anyway because while you can make it identified by saying that these factor loadings, for example, are, are the same, that would identify the model, then uh, the estimation wouldn't give you any, any meaningful information anyway. So let's take another example and, uh, or, or work more with this example. So um, let's assume that uh, our correlation matrix for this uh, two-factor model, each with one indicator, is uh, so we have A1 and B1 they're correlated at 0 0.1 and we have uh, three parameters that we want to estimate. So uh, you can't, we have one correlation that depends on three parameters and these uh, other variances don't depend on, on the model or they, they do depend on their terms but we don't really uh, care about those in this video. So uh, why is the correlation between A1 and B1 so low? There are basically uh, three different options. It's possible that a1 and B1 are both highly reliable indicators of these factors A and B. It's also possible and, and then uh, the A and B are just uh, weakly correlated. It's also possible that uh, A and B are highly correlated but A1 is unreliable and therefore we observe only uh, a small correlation. Or it's possible that A and B are highly correlated but B1 is unreliable. The problem is that we cannot know which of these three options are is correct because they all have the same empirical implication which is that this correlation here is, is quite small. So that's another example of non-identification problem. Here we are estimating uh, five things. So we have two error variances, we have two factor loadings and one factor correlation. We are trying to estimate it from uh, just three elements of information. We can't do that. The model is not identified. We cannot know which one of these three explanations is correct empirically. Of course, uh, we can then use theory and rule out one of these base, uh, alternate explanations based on theory, but that goes beyond our uh, factor analysis estimation and identification. So this model is not identified. It cannot be estimated meaningfully. Let's take a look at our uh, scale setting now. So the identification basically means that our uh, you have more information than uh, what you estimate. So the number of unique elements in the correlation matrix of the indicators 
must exceed or be the same as the number of free parameters that you estimate from the model. Okay, so normally we have uh, in expert the factor analysis we have standardized factors. So the idea is that uh, all the factors have variances of one, means of zero in the exploratory analysis and uh, that defines the scale of these variables. So every variable must have a variance. In exploratory analysis the, the uh, factors are scaled to have unit variance. So they're standardized and then all the, the factor loadings are then standardized recursion coefficients for that reason. Then uh, what if uh, we don't standardize the factors? So we are saying that instead of uh, saying that the factors variance is one, we are estimating the factors variance. So we add these factor variances here and factor variance here. So we have 15 free parameters. We still have 21 units of information from which we estimate, but we estimate 15 different things. So the decrease of freedom is six, which means that uh, this model is over identified. So it's positive. So in principle, it is possible to estimate this model meaningfully. We can do the estimation. So uh, let's assume that uh, that's our observed correlation matrix. That's our implied correlation matrix. Then we can find the values for the, uh, the phi and uh, the lambdas. So that this uh, implied matrix reproduces this correlation matrix perfectly. In this case, that's possible because these, are or these correlations all have the same value. Generally, in small samples, you will never completely reproduce the data. But this ex example you do just to simplify things. So uh, we can estimate and uh, that's one set of estimates that will give you uh, the exact, exact fit between the observed variable, observed correlation matrix and the implied correlation matrix. So uh, we're fine, right? Turns out we have a small problem because uh, there's another set of, of estimates that also reproduce the correlation matrix perfectly using the implied correlation matrix. So you can plug in uh, these, uh, these values to the equations and see that they produce the exact same implied cor correlation. So we have here factor A's variance is one versus factor A's variance is two and uh, Therefore, they, they are produce the same fit. So what do we do? We can go and, and come up with indefinitely many examples. So if factor A's variance is 0 0.5, then we will uh, have different values for the factor loadings, but still uh, the uh, empirical correlation matrix is reproduced perfectly using the model implied correlation matrix. So this is the uh, the problem of, of scale setting of latent variables in confronted factor analysis models. So uh, we need to set the metric. So uh, the factors themselves, because we don't observe the factors, they're just arbitrary entries. We don't know whether they vary from uh, 0 to 1 or 0 to uh, 1 million or minus 5 to plus 10 or whatever. We don't know their range, we don't know their variances, we don't know their means. We have to uh, specify the scale of each later, each factor ourselves. In exploratory analysis, we typically don't model means, and then we assume that uh, the variances of we fix the variances of the factors to be ones. In confrontatory analysis, there are reasons why we don't fix the um, variances to ones that I'll explain a bit later. But the problem generally is that uh, we, we must uh, define whether we are talking about centimeters or inches, do we talk about Celsius or Fahrenheit, they quantify the same exact thing and they are equally, from, uh, equally good measures from a statistical perspective to, to measure uh, length or temperature. We have to agree on, on what is the scale that we are using. So uh, also uh, regression gives us the, the one unit change, the effect of one unit change in, in the independent variable on the dependent variable. Considering uh, regression coefficients only makes sense after we have considered uh, how we define the unit. So what is the unit of, of, of A and what is the unit of B? We have to set them uh, manually. So we have to decide a scale setting approach. 
In exploratory analysis, as I said, we typically say that factor A and factor B on all factors have variances of one. That produces our standardized factor loadings, which are standardized regression coefficients of the indicators on the factors, or in the case of orthogonal of, of our uncorrelated factors, they equal correlations. Uh, we use that in exploratory factor analysis. We cannot use that in structural regression models. Structural regression model is an extension of a factor analysis model where we allow regression relationships between the factors. The reason why we can't use this approach is that the variation of uh, an endogenous variable, so a variable that depends on other variables, is a sum of those other variables. So we can't say that a variable's variance is one if that variance depends on other things in the model. But that's, that's beyond this video. Another very common approach is that we uh, set the, uh, the first indicator to be fixed, the first indicator's loading to be one. And this is the default scale setting approach in most structural equation modeling or confrontational factor analysis software. The reason is that this can be used pretty much always uh, regardless of what kind of variables we have here as A and B and what kind of relationship we specify between A and B. And uh, the idea is that we scale that on. If we assume that classical test theory holds, so all these errors here are just random noise, then uh, the variance of A is, is whatever is the variance of the true score of A1. So that's also appealing if we consider that the only source of error is random noise, then the variance of factor A is the variation of A1 or what the variation A1 would be if it wasn't contaminated with this random noise here. So that's also uh, one way, one reason why this is appealing. It, it allows us to uh, consider the, the scale of this, uh, these indicators without error variance, assuming classical test theory holds for the data. And uh, this is such a common approach that uh, there's a rule of thumb that I present. Always use the first indicators to fix the scale. We can see uh, that the papers that we have used as examples in these videos ha are using this approach. Mesquite and Lazzarini, you can see that all loadings of first indicators are ones. So they, they set the scale of the latent variable by fixing this loading to one. And, uh, then they have the Z statistic here and uh, you can see that the indicators, the first indicators don't have a Z statistic. The reason is that they are not estimated from the data. Instead, a researcher says that these are ones, they are not estimated. And if something is not estimated, it doesn't vary from sample to sample. So it doesn't have a standard error. So we can't calculate uh, the t Z statistic for it. We can see the same uh, in Ulerenko's paper. So Ulerenko's paper, uh, the first loading, it's not one, but it doesn't have uh, a standard error. And that, it doesn't have a Z statistic, it doesn't have a standard error. So that's indication that they actually are fixed the first loading to be one to identify or to scale the latent variables. If you want to have standardized factor loadings, so you want to, if you want to have loadings uh, that are expressed in, in the scale of the exploratory analysis where the factor variances are ones, then you can uh, rescale the confirmatory factor analysis results afterwards. So your software will produce that for you if you check the standardized estimates option there. So these are standardized estimates, but the, the scaling has been done after estimation. So you first estimate an unstandardized confirmatory factor analysis where each flow factor is scaled by fixing the first indicator, then you scale the, the resulting solution. That's the same approach that you use for uh, standardized regression coefficients. You first estimate regression, then you scale the parameter estimates later. So the summary of, of identification of confrontative factor analysis models. A model is identified if every latent variable has a scale and if the decrease of freedom is positive for the, and it's also every part of the model has to be identified. In confrontative factor analysis, 
after we have established that every latent variable, every factor has a scale, then uh, all factors with three indicators are always identified. So three indicators, if you have three variables, you can always run a factor analysis no matter what. Then if you have two factors, then uh, th we can either say that uh, fix that both are equally reliable. So we fix the factor loadings to be uh, once or we can embed this factor in a larger system. So just two variables alone, we can't estimate a factor model unless we fix this uh, factor loadings to be the same. If we embed this uh, two factor, the two, two indicator factor into a larger factor analysis, then we can estimate it because we can use information from other indicators to estimate these factor loadings. And one single indicator rule, if we have a factor with just a single indicator, then we cannot estimate the reliability of the indicator because you cannot estimate reliability based on just one measure. That's the idea. We have to assume what is the error variance. And typically we, uh, we do that by constraining the error variance to be zero. So we say that uh, this factor A or construct A is measured without any error if we can't estimate it. Of course, we could constrain the error variance to be something else. If we know that the uh, indicator has typically shown to be 80% uh, reliable, then we can fix this variance here to be 80% uh, of the observed variance of the indicator. But that's uh, rarely done. So identification uh, is a requirement for estimation. If our model is not identified, it cannot be meaningfully estimated. Identification basically means that uh, do you have enough information to estimate the model? If we have uh, one correlation, we can't estimate two different things from one correlation. You need uh, at least one unit of information for everything that you estimate. Ideally, you have more information so that you have redundancy. So we need to have uh, a scale for each latent variables and the decrease of freedom must be non-negative. Ideally, it is positive and the more positive it is, the better our model tests are. 